Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're not gonna believe where we are today. Let me show you. We're back in Copic. There she is. We're gonna have a nice guided tour of the inside of this building with Miss Stephanie. And we've got Mr. Terry back with us today. And I hope you enjoy this upcoming video. We're about to go inside. I'll get back with you. Okay guys, you see that shape up there on the bottom side of those roofing boards? That is the outline, we're looking up, that is the outline of the old bay window. And the first evidence we had of that is, we've got the wide original boards, then you got three inch, three inch, three inch. That right there is where the bay window was. And that right there, it's the outline of where it touched the roofing boards. Let's go in. Oh boy. Here we go. Yeah, the lighting's pretty good in here. We're in the front door here. What room would this have been? The ticket. This was the ticket master's office. This is the yeah. ticket master's office. So that opening, you can see my finger. That opening right there is the inside of what we were just looking at on the outside. That's where the bay window would have been. Uh, track side. Yeah, right there. Here is right there, Mr. Finger. <laughs> where the old stove would have been right here uh, quite cozy little building there's a 1985 calendar hanging up on the wall the original ceiling is still in place I tell you what this building is still solid bones and Stephanie has secured all the necessary human hands in the form of architects, historic <coughs> preservationists uh, to make this building back as whole as possible again. Side extension, looking north here. Looking out. The window. I'm trying to go slow for you so you can see. She's still pretty solid. Yeah. So that is when we first came in this door here. Um, that is obviously the back wall of the chimney where the stove was. And, uh huh. So, this little threshold walkway here, I have to kind of watch down where I'm walking. Yeah, but this well, is the, the, the outside or the inside. The middle thing. This yeah. is the walkway up into the freight house. Uh, they are connected here. So, we are now in about as far as we want to go, <laughs> yeah. I would assume. Um, yeah, we're looking at, we're looking down right through the ground. So, obviously, water damage, uh, wind damage, elements of time have taken its toll on this freight house. Now, your intentions are both buildings. Yes. You're, gonna, you're gonna look at this as one project. Yeah, this is gonna be a kitchen living area. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> and then we're hopefully gonna put a window in the back so you can see out to the stream and the mountains. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet. Um, this was primarily bags of grain, uh, yeah. lumber, nope. mixed freight. Um, this was this was a freight house so therefore 
Anything and everything that the railroad brought here on boxcars, flats, and gondolas went into this building for storage from one day to the next and one month to the next. Um, yeah, so this building will prove to be a little more <laughs> time consuming than the actual passenger station, but Stephanie's got a plan and she's going to see it through. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to turn you off now so I can use two hands to get back out of here and we'll pick up again where we left off. Alright, I took a little bit of time here to try to lay these out. These are just a small example of some of the, the letterheads and waybills that Stephanie found um, up in the attic. Just look at that penmanship. So what we're looking at here is, um, it looks like it's August of 1919. Uh, the Philadelphia, Reading and New England Railroad Company. Now, she found tens and tens, if not hundreds of these up in the attic. She took home and preserved the better of all of them and these are just some that she's left behind here at the station just to show people that come here for tours like i am and this is just a quick three of them um this looks like uh 10 sacks spelled out s-a-x instead of s-a-c-k 10 sacks of salt b maybe salt blocks this one yeah, looks like... I, I have a warm spot for the old days, but... <sighs> yeah, I, I do appreciate that. Two bills of something. This one is stationary. And also August of 1919. <laughs> so these are just awesome. I just love the old penmanship. Here's one from 29. That looks like... August of 29, 829, August of 1929. So that's not quite 100 years ago yet, but we're working on it. J.K.O. Sherwood, receiver of the Philadelphia, Reading, and New England Railroad Company. From Rhinecliff, here we go, Rhinecliff, New York. Uh, to C.O. Two felts of stationery, 15 pounds, or maybe 75 pounds, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, thought you guys would like to see that. That's cool. All right, you know I love the milk crates. There's Baltimore, Maryland. Looks like green, green swan farms, 1956, right there metal edge yep now ever since I filmed up on the Hoosick Tunnel in Wilmington and we did the Reedsboro pulp mill I am in constant lookout for anything that would have that logo on it yeah she's Stephanie has managed to pick through and save little trinkets here and there that will be incorporated into the grand scheme when this building gets rebuilt. We're gonna go outside and take a look around outside and Mr. Terry and I are gonna crawl underneath. <laughs> All right, well, we went out back. I'll spin you real quick here. There's the station, so geographically we are on the line. Stephanie just cleared this bridge abutment where it crossed going east, that guardrail of that road out there, that's Route 22, there you can see it there. That's Massachusetts up there on those hills. Um, the beautiful curve is just east of 22 over there. I'm going to show you that also again on this video. That's on one of my other videos on the Rhinebeck in Connecticut. But she's got this abutment all exposed I really wish I could get out there and shoot it this way but I can't mr. and mrs. beaver uh, 
would not let me go out there. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> Here it is right here. Now, Terry and Stephanie and I were just talking about the the uh, variety and blending of different types of stone. The further north and east we get from here, this Copake, Hillsdale, um, Quarryville region, the more of the granite-like stone you find harder sharper flatter and more angular pieces than the bluestone that we kind of have come to know and love down in the Catskills but this is it we're standing on original abutment Rhinebeck in Connecticut of the Copake station where uh, we're gonna go underneath <laughs> and we might get to go up in the attic. All right, I promised we'd go under. Here we are. Look at all that vermin poop. <laughs> we bring everything here on Lost Rails. <sighs> what do you got, Mr. Terry? Anything good so far? Armorage. <laughs> all right, let's look at this joint right here. Oh, skylight. So. We are now underneath the freight house. Uh, so that guy right there, all the end ones, but this main carrying beam down the middle here is what, Terry, 1212? Uh, At least. Uh, and that one, uh, it's the verticals look eight, like they're eight by, 12. eight by 12. Oh yeah, that, that also. So these are eight by 12s, original to this freight house. Um, Hey, Stephanie. Oh. I'm gonna try to get some info. Do you know the approximate or the exact date of this station and freight house where they built uh, together as one, where they built separately? That was separate. The, the, the depot is 1876, the freight house is 1913. 1876 freight uh, depot, yep. 1913 freight house. Okay barrels for posts. Oh yeah. Terry has an eye for this. What I want to show you here is they used barrels to pour nail kegs. Nail kegs to pour the footings, the concrete footings for the vertical posts on this freight house. There's a, there's a couple more good examples up there. I don't want to kneel on a nail. <laughs> That would not, that would ruin my day. Look at that right there, that one. Tie plate. And there's another one. There's a tie plate, rail plate right there. Yeah, all right, well, you know what? <laughs> hey guys, when's the last time you were underneath a freight house? You are now, sitting in your comfy chair. Uh, that's where we were just standing up there. And let's see if we can't get out of here and underneath the, uh, the depot. All right, I know a lot of you guys and gals have commented before you're into telegraph poles. It's cool. Some people that watch this channel are into bricks. Some are into bluestone. And there's a lot of folks that love the old telegraph poles. This is the remnants of it. And you can always tell the cedar. They rotted from the inside out. So this pole would have gone right up in the air, right here in this little alcove between the freight house and the passenger depot telegraph pole all right well in keeping with the name of this channel lost rail beds there's a chunk of rail that was part of the siding we are on the north side of the building and as Stephanie just pointed out architecturally speaking you'll always notice on the on the rake boards and on the corners of these buildings not so much there but definitely on this one that was to accommodate the height of the box cars coming in so they so they could get as close as possible to offload and load without taking off the rake boards and the siding shot right out here toward that cedar tree and it probably ended before the waterway uh, 
it, oh, it, it actually around, curved. Sorry, the, the, the far one out there. So oh. it curved around the... Okay, yeah. so it curved. It had a curve to it, which explains possibly the curve oh, yeah. of this rail. Mm -hmm. That would almost... I think we'd go out on a pretty sturdy limb if we said that exact piece of rail with that curve was probably part of that siding that curved. What do you think, guys and gals? I bet you. Yep. Terry is way, way, way under there. Terry, I think he's got some raccoon blood in him. Um, we can't get under there. So I'm going to turn you off and go under there and find him. Uh, we were just discussing the Rhinebeck and Connecticut colors. And I hope this does it justice. But you can still see the remnants of this beautiful lead paint, folks. Lead paint. <laughs> uh, here on the original boards being covered up by this beautiful faux brick 1950s stuff. But it was that yellow color. Um, possibly had green trim. I've seen a lot of the green and beige, green and yellow, and white and green. All right, we took a little walk. As you can see, the station and the rail bed. Right about there is the bridge abutments that we were standing on before. And the siding came out and gently curved. I would say that's a 90 degree curve. That's not a gentle curve. And it came right along here, along this gradient right here. Probably ended with a bumper type of an apparatus somewhere there. Yeah. To this building here, that is the remnants of the coal shed. Right here. And I would guess, Terry, you're good at this. Width and length, just approximate. Let's see how good we can get them here. Terry loves this stuff. He's thinking. Uh, Coal shed. 30 by 16. 30 by 16. I think you're spot on. Awesome. Through 22. Now, that is Massachusetts, correct? The mountains? No, on, on Not the quite. The mountains. On the other side. So that's still New York or is that Connecticut? Yeah. That's New York. That's still New York. Okay. So just on the other side there. If you remember one of my videos, we did a whole shot on Boston Corners and why that little chunk of Massachusetts got angled off. We came out just a tad bit farther. That's the coal storage shed right there. There is a massive concrete foundation remnants here. I'm actually standing on concrete and brick foundations here. Oh, we found it. Somebody will move it for you. This is not that heavy. Is it American <laughs> Standard or Elgin? I think it's Caesar. Caesar. <laughs> Look Julius. at that. <laughs> Julius Caesar. Look at that pitting. That's a beautiful find right there. That is. Uh, so anyway, Stephanie says this was part of the lumber yard buildings that were here. And the siding, let me walk over just about in line with it. So the siding, I was, I was somewhat short. The siding actually continued past the coal shed and went in between several buildings of this lumber yard right here. And then it bumpered and ended. So this whole entire yard piece of property here that Stephanie is now the caretaker of and the owner of was industrial railroad related business commerce that's a gorgeous tree right there there's a nice screenshot right there so this here is the extreme reaches of the northern part of her property that was a garage that's on the old maps um, Stephanie just asked us can you guys tell us what this was and of course our first answer was well it's a big old square chunk of concrete but <laughs> but when you look at it Let's look at it this way. It's got a big square chamfered larger piece on the bottom and it's narrower up top. This thing would have been stood up 
this way, this being the bottom, and this being the top. And you can see bolts there, and there's two more bolt holes and down there. So this would have been a signpost. Stephanie informed us this was a oil terminal, gasoline, Sacconi, Standard Oil Company of New York, processor to mobile. This was a Sacconi um, establishment here. And so this was our best educated guess, a very large chunk of uh, concrete used perhaps roadside for uh, an old Sacconi sign. Yeah, so this is basically the yard here. Passenger depot, freight depot. We got the stone abutments. We've got remnants of rail. We've got the siding that came out past the coal shed and into the lumber yard that was here. Uh, remnants of the old garage building. And we're going to back all of this up with some documentation from the Nimke books showing the actual photographs of these buildings way back when cool stuff all right well here we are here are the trucks a couple of short pieces of rail that she's managed to secure and save here um, and we are about to go inside the caboose it's not just a caboose it's not the caboose it is the caboose and now was the graffiti on there when you bought it, it was. <laughs> Did it knew something about the caboose because it says NYC 180.: Oh yeah, yeah, this is an old New York Central. Yeah. Um, Stephanie secured it from what was the town? Essex. Essex up outside of Boston. Um, I think without looking at a map, shoot me on the comment section, but I think it's up around Waltham somewhere, a suburb sub suburb of Boston. Um, yeah, cool. I love those beautiful curved grab handles. Um, so this is a, a project number one, high priority? It, it needs to be moved. That's the best priority is to move <laughs> oh. it. <laughs> okay, so anybody out there in the sound of our voice have a big crane that wants to move a caboose, get in touch with us. <laughs> All right, let's go inside and check it out. Okay, we got a little closer. Now, if you put on your imaginary thinking caps and trace my finger, Mr. Finger is going right around a beautiful oval where the New York Central Oval was. And if we look past this wonderful, colorful, graphical graffiti, we've got NYC, and I apologize, Stephanie told me the number, but I forget, it's 18, looks like two, the numbers are right here uh, underneath this graffiti. So this, this is original side siding on this side. Um, yeah, because wood wood side, wood roof with those arches, um, yeah. absolutely turn of the century-ish, yeah. minus 10 years either way. Yep. But yeah, I have some, some very old records of whether it was the same could be someone. Love the flooring. And here we go with the original. That, that's a big iron flange. That when he was a kid, right he there, the where the stove would have been, right here. In the turret. This was a vent window. They always had one behind the stove. <laughs> yeah. And we are in the cupola section. Cool, cool beans. What do you think, Terry? Awesome stuff, huh? Well, start to finish, it is what, thirty. 30 feet? Yeah, just shy. Just shy of 30 feet. So, again, we need a crane. We need a guy that can run a crane. We need this picked up and moved. Not far, just over there. <laughs> okay, here we are up in the attic above the ticket agent's office. Not much but dust. Note the beam with the five wooden threaded screw pieces for the glass insulators. These would have had the copper wire around the insulators coming in from the outside telegraph pole 
and then leading down through and into the room below, hooked up to the telegraph station. This passenger depot was built in 1876. A freight house built in 1913. And now the only thing left to do is to get Mr. Terry safely back down. All right, kids, that sign is there for a reason. This is a cool spot. It is gorgeous. It is historical. Stephanie would love for you to drive up here and stop on the road and take a peek at it and take as many pictures as you want but please 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 respect private property as I've told you a zillion times this belongs to somebody you wouldn't want somebody coming into your kitchen saying what's for dinner thank you Well, we just pulled out of Copake and we're uh, venturing home back roads and we are in Craryville, New York on the New York Central Harlem Division line that runs parallel with Route 23 from Hillsdale um, West and goes up into Chatham, New York. And we just stumbled upon this old iron girdered bridge. Yeah. So... We did a quick turnaround. Ooh, this is spongy. <laughs> uh, goes over a little creek. Um, not sure the name of the creek. We can look that up for you. But this railroad artifact is still here. And if it got new ties and rails laid, I bet it would support a tourist line for sure. Nice, huh? Yeah, Craryville, New York. New York Central Harlem Division. We came from up there, down and around and around and down to the bottom. And there she is. Let's go. Try not to get wet here and fall in the drink. Oh. Look at the... Now, um, are those... Would those have been the piers and the footings for the original wooden trestle? Uh, that would make sense. Yeah. So, here you see it. One, two, uh, that was three, four, five, and there's five, and there's another five, and there were probably another five over there. Railroad tie in the water. It looks like it's uh, right yeah. there. Railroad tie in the water. Right, right there. Remnants of a railroad tie or a post that was upright in the center. Yeah. So we're underneath this one here and look at that flaking that's that's uh, yeah that's, uh, that's what happens to the original virgin iron there look at that. right down into the water down there so maybe it's not still structurally sound as much as we thought it was oh look right behind us 
one, nine, three, zero. 1930, there it is, 1930. And I recently learned why the railroad did that. They didn't do it just to say, hey boys, let's leave a note that we were here in 1930 and built this bridge. They did it, or could that be 38? Does it look like there's a, when I look at it here, look at it in the screen, Terry. Looks like it could be 1930 or 1938. I'm not sure. I guess it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. But they would do that and then go back and periodically test it to see the deterioration of the concrete and to see no, if it was holding up good. That's 1930. 1930, okay, yeah. All right. Cool. So guess we can't get to that side to see if there's a date on that side but it doesn't matter well, we know it, on, it was they only did it on one they side only did it on the one side yep but I would I would say I, I think you're correct Terry these are the footings of the old original wooden trestle that was here um, that was taken down and replaced in 1929 and 1930 when this one was built <sighs> Bocce. Does it float? Yep, it floats. <laughs> He's going for it, folks. All right, we're gonna film this. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> That's too long of a jump. That's too long of a jump. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. It's starting to oh rain. Oh my God! It's the whole bottom quarter of this side beam is completely rotted through. Oh yeah, right. There, rotted right through. Right here, we got a big wall. Yep. All right, I'm gonna turn you off because uh, it's starting to rain. It's almost like a wet snow kind of a thing. Well, I hope you all enjoyed our little adventure up to Copake, New York, and getting to travel once again with the old cohort, Mr. Terry, and getting to meet Miss Stephanie that owns the Copake station. She's got some mighty big plans for the caboose and. The the passenger depot and the freight house. I'm sure she'll see it through. By the way, if you know anybody that owns a crane, knows how to run it, contact us. Anyway, we got to spend some time in Copake. We went up and we hit Route 23 in Hillsdale. We turned left and went west, following the New York Central Main Line that went eventually up into Chatham. And that's where we found that cool old bridge, right there in Craryville. Now, I'm sure we're going to do one of these days real soon a whole entire series on the New York Central Northern Duchess up into Columbia and up into Chatham. Stay tuned for that one. This might be just a little teaser. <laughs> glad you enjoyed. Glad you rode along with us. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. <laughs>